Hello, I'm Lara Kocharsan and this is Newsweek, your dose of what people are talking about online. As Donald Trump's poll numbers continue to slide, he's making bold moves to shift momentum in his favor in the race to the White House. On Monday, Trump made a high-profile return to Elon Musk's X, using it as a platform to push his presidential campaign and launch attacks on Democratic nominee Kamala Harris. All of you will go to the polls, who stand there in the polling place and make a decision. His first official post on the platform was a campaign video aimed at rallying supporters. Reaction on X was mixed. Some users saw Trump's comeback as a desperate bid to reverse his plummeting poll numbers, while others were simply thrilled to see him back. Trump's rise as a political force in 2016 was deeply intertwined with Twitter, which was at its peak during that time. His knack for leveraging the platform made the election a standout moment for both him and the medium. Now, under Musk's leadership, X has shed many safeguards against falsehoods and conspiracy theories, making it an ideal stage for Trump to navigate beyond traditional media constraints and spin his alternative reality, something that resonates strongly with his base. Musk, who has publicly backed Trump, orchestrated an X interview with them this week, providing a prime platform during one of the low points of Trump's campaign. Despite a 42-minute delay, which Musk blamed on a supposed cyber attack, though not confirmed, the yes, event attracted 1.3 million live listeners and is expected to reach 100 million in total views. The conversation highlighted how social media has reshaped presidential politics, especially under a free speech advocate like Musk. During the chat, Trump delivered at least 20 false claims without any challenge from Musk. These span various topics from immigration to foreign policy. Nick is fact-checking some of these false claims, and for clarity, the direct quotes you'll hear are voiced by an AI generator mimicking Trump's voice. Our crime rates going through the roof. Crime rates actually dropped significantly in 2023 and early 2024. I think we have the worst inflation we've had in 100 years. U.S. inflation peaked at 9.1% in June 2022, the highest since 1981, not 100 years. It has since decreased to 3.2%. The biggest threat? It's not global warming where the ocean's going to rise one-eighth of an inch over the next 400 years. The current rate in rising sea levels exceeds Trump's claim. She wants to release all the prisoners in detention. There is no evidence Harris supports releasing all detainees. She was the border czar. She was totally in charge. Harris was never the border czar. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas handles border security. Millions of people are coming in a month. The peak in illegal border crossings under Biden was December 2023, with around 370,000 encounters. Rigged election in 2020. The 2020 election was fair and not rigged. Biden won the Electoral College by a margin of 306 to 232 with Ukraine, so we're in for $250 billion and they're in for about $71 billion. European countries actually committed more aid to Ukraine than the US, and that's according to the Kiel Institute for the World Economy. They had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. Iran continued to fund these groups, though funding declined due to Trump's sanctions. We gave $85 billion of military equipment back to Afghanistan. The actual value of abandoned equipment was about $7.1 billion. Meanwhile, on Truth Social, Trump echoed a claim that had been circulating among his supporters online in the past week. He accused Vice President Kamala Harris of using artificial intelligence to exaggerate the size of her rally crowd. 
Has anyone noticed that Kamala cheated at the airport? Trump wrote, referencing an August 7 image of a Michigan tarmac with Air Force Two and a large crowd holding Harris wall signs. There was nobody at the plane, and she AI'd it, showing a massive crowd of so-called followers, but they didn't exist. The rally at Detroit Metro Airport actually drew around 15,000 people, with the crowd extending onto the tarmac to cheer Air Force Two's arrival. Multiple angles of the event show large crowds, and fact-checking site Snopes, using AI detection tools, confirmed that the image Trump cited appeared to be authentic. Across the pond in Britain, some lawmakers are quitting X over the social media platform's stance on hate and disinformation. This comes after X's role in spreading false reports and allegations about the accused murderer of three children, as well as boss Elon Musk personally wading in and spreading more disinformation. Joel is in London and tells us what sparked this content and how it may impact the platform's future in the UK. It's probably quite hard to remember a time when social media was thought of as a revolutionary force for good. And if you're struggling, you're not alone. Uh, here in the UK, there is a lot of focus on how toxic social media has been, in particular over the last month, as a result of the role it played in the riots here. Now, those riots, of course, saw far-right protesters attacking mosques, uh, attacking hotels, housing asylum seekers, and that was largely because many had been led to believe that uh, a Muslim migrant was behind the stabbings of three young girls in a place called Southport in the north of the country. Uh, the problem was the man believed to be behind those attacks was neither a Muslim nor a migrant, uh, and uh, many people thought that that was the case because of disinformation that was being spread online, particularly through social media. Now, the UK government has repeatedly talked about the role that social media has played in all of this. This is the Home Secretary, the UK Interior Minister, Yvette Cooper, speaking on August the 5th. Social media acted as really a rocket booster behind both the spread of misinformation and also the organisation of this violence. Social media companies need to take some responsibility. We also need to make sure that criminal activity online is being pursued. Now, over the last week or so, we've seen UK courts expediting cases involving those believed to be uh, involved in the riots, in particular those involved in social media, as well as those actually out on the streets. In fact, we've seen some already being given jail time as a result. Now, many of those involved in spreading uh, misinformation during the riots have since deleted their posts. There have been a few other key players in all of this. Now, one of them is a guy called Tommy Robinson, who is a former leader of an organization called the English Defense League, the EDL. That has officially now been disbanded, but he essentially markets himself as a truth-sayer, uh, a defender of so-called nativism. He's regularly hit out at alleged media cover-ups, media lies, in his opinion, and uh, most government policy, too, over not just migration but policing over the last week. He has accused the government and police of double standards in trying uh, to go about that and, uh, of course, has hit out at uh, migrant communities quite regularly as well. His stuff is compelling for a lot of people, it gets a lot of traction, according to an analysis done by the Center for Countering Digital Hate. His posts on X uh, during the uh, period of the riots were viewed more than 434 million times. Then, of course, there's Elon Musk, the owner of X, of course. He has been accused of exacerbating the situation. He posted things like civil war is inevitable during the riots and uh, has been, been criticized pretty vocally by the UK government for that and for letting other far-right uh, personalities back onto his platform. Those personalities, by the way, have attracted such a level of interest that it's thought uh, to have uh, brought in something like tens of millions of dollars in revenue uh, from advertising. Now, the most pressing question for many in the UK is whether the law needs to change as a result of all of this. There are new online safety laws that are supposed to come into effect next year. Um, some have been calling for those to be beefed up as a result of what we've seen, but they're very, very complicated, and trying to negotiate changes to them could take a, a very, very long time. Then there's the issue of anti-migrant sentiment, which permeates a lot more deeply into British society, certainly more than we actually witnessed on the streets and online, and trying to deal with that is a much longer-term issue uh, that's going to take a lot more of a nuance response from government and from civil society. And then there is this other ultimate question of freedom of speech. Where does that begin? Where does it end? That could be a question that we may never have a real answer to. Spreading fake news can harm society, but as Joel mentioned, social media companies have a lot to gain from it. They use algorithms designed to direct and promote content. Commercial companies profit from increased clicks, translating to more revenue. By keeping users engaged, social media platforms ensure people keep clicking and following accounts. 
However, these algorithms often limit information flow and contribute to the spread of misinformation. As algorithms evolve, individuals exploit them and advance their agendas. Some notorious figures previously banned are now back online, partly due to Elon Musk. After taking over Twitter and rebranding it as X, Musk announced a general amnesty for some suspended accounts, claiming it was to protect free speech. In Senegal, media organizations observed a news blackout to protest new economic measures by the new government, which they claim threatened the industry. On Tuesday, many private newspapers didn't publish, and two popular private radio stations played music instead of news. The Senegalese Council of Press Distributors and Publishers called for the protests in response to what they call recent actions by the new government, which took office in April. They have accused the authorities of freezing media companies' bank accounts over unpaid taxes, seizing production equipment, and unilaterally terminating advertising contracts to the media. I've been with this company for 20 years. I joined in 2004 and I've known for several years now that the first signs were already there, that financial difficulties were coming. Now, we're in the middle of it. Coincidentally, there's been a change of regime, and the new public authorities are also stepping on the accelerator to kill off the private media, certain private media, just to silence any critical voices. Normally, we receive 15 to 16 dailies, but today we only received three, and that's not good for us. We would like the government and the press owners to get together as soon as possible to discuss this situation. Since the time of President Abdudiyouf, the press has played its role well and there have not been many strikes. The new authorities need to hold talks with those involved in the press. The West African nation of Senegal is one of Africa's most stable countries. Since gaining independence in 1960, it has seen three peaceful political transitions. In March, Basiru Diome Fay was elected as the country's fifth president, winning the first round with the majority of votes. But his election came after mass protests because the polls were delayed. This led to clashes between protesters and police. The previous government responded by cutting off internet access and restricting broadcasting. To India, where doctors are staging nationwide protests, calling for laws to protect them and other medical workers in the workplace. Hundreds of thousands of doctors have gone on strike in response to the rape and murder of a trainee doctor in eastern India. The strike has caused disruptions at hospitals across India. While 19 of India's 28 states do have protection laws, protesters argue that a national law is long overdue. The Central Healthcare Protection Act, which would protect doctors, nurses, medical students and ambulance drivers from violence, was introduced five years ago but has yet to be enacted. We want a Central Protection Act for healthcare workers and we want something concrete on that. So I request the Honorable Health Minister Shri J.P. Nadda and Honorable Home Minister Shri Amit Shah to actually give us something concrete so that never ever in future something like this happens uh, to a doctor who is on duty. Just imagine that if a doctor who is working in one of the topmost medical colleges of the state capital uh, who is on duty, if she is unsafe, then what is the scenario of a doctor, of a lady doctor who is working in a PHC or someplace else? Pop star Katy Perry is facing a storm of controversy over her latest music video filmed in Spain. The Environmental Department of the Balearic Islands is investigating possible damage to the protected dunes of Es Palmador from her video for Lifetimes. Released on August 8, the video features Perry enjoying the beaches and nightlife of Ibiza and Fromentera. It includes footage of the Es Palmador dunes, a protected area marked off with ropes. The department announced on Tuesday that Perry's production company might have filmed without the necessary authorization and is now examining potential environmental harm. Lifetimes, produced by the controversial Dr. Luke, follows Perry's comeback single, Woman's World, which received largely negative reviews. Like the sun is always rising. And that's our show. Find our latest stuff on YouTube and do subscribe to our channel. See you soon.